Hello, my name is Walter Richards and I'm from the Game Train. I'm going to jump on the bandwagon of new games and record and play and do other shit with Hyper Light Drifter. Let's do it. I already played it a bit and uh, I can definitely tell you one thing before you get started. If you want to play this by yourself, you're gonna need to gauge your expectations a little bit. In terms of difficulty, you could say that this is close to Souls-esque games, so... You're in for a surprise if you're expecting this to be pretty easy-peasy. And if you're not expecting that, and if you're a, a salty, crusty bastard who plays nothing but old hard games, well, this is just for you. For me, well, it is also for me, because that's the kind of a crusty, salty bastard that I am, but... It did take me by surprise the first time I played, but we'll get to that momentarily, because talking over a menu, that's kinda stupid. Now I have New Game Plus, but they're not gonna do that, because New Game Plus is evil. They're gonna do a regular New Game. Uh, don't mind the first save file, that's where I got... Um, well, that, that's where I'm trying to get 100%. Once I find everything and get that all sorted out, we're going to make a video about uh, the collectibles as well, so you can look forward to that. I'll try to make it as detailed as I can, because that could really help, I imagine. For now, in this regular playthrough, I'll try to get as many secrets as I can. However, I haven't found all of them, and I don't remember all of them, so I'll, I'll do my best. With that said, Hit A and enjoy the cutscene, for it is quite loud.
Alright, that was a cutscene. And your guess is as good as mine as to what exactly it's supposed to mean. Because this game does not use dialogue at all. But before we get into that, how about we take a look at those controls. The game recommends using a gamepad. I'm using an Xbox 360 gamepad, so I, I guess I'm pretty good. If you're using the same thing, the controls are simple. You use the um, analog stick to move around, which kind of bothers me. Use X to attack, A is to dash, Y is to pick things up and interact with things, B right now doesn't do anything, left bumper allows you to heal. Other controls will come into play whenever they come into play. So we'll discuss them whenever they come into play. <laughs> Simple as that, right? Now this area can still be accessed after you finish it up. This is like a tutorial area right now, but you can go get back to it later on if you want to. So that's not a problem. I'll show you how to do that a bit later. Well, maybe I could do that now actually, Let we'll see. Check this guy out, you'll find your first gun, a pistol. It's a very simple gun. Left trigger will allow you to aim, the aim reticule is very minimal, so uh, keep that in mind. And right trigger allows you to shoot, very nice. Slashing enemies and objects allows you to charge your weapons ammo. So if you find yourself running low, just kill some enemies or blow up some boxes. It's not a big deal. Try not to fall off ledges, by the way, because uh, you take damage if you fall off. And falling off ledges can happen a lot more often than you think. So, there's that. Mm, that would be a nice way to go. Too bad we can't quite go that way yet. We have to go up here first. So do just that. And there you have it. Now you're up here. This is a pretty neat place. I don't think this area contains any enemies to speak of. But here you have a view of um, the town. We'll need to go there, because that's where our journey begins. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to make it through. Oh, what the hell is this shit? Suddenly, it's uh, raining backwards. And then the many things that'll happen in the future happen now. These uh, visions of a strange, mysterious, dark creature. For your viewing convenience, I have lowered the volume of that particular vision, and I will do so with the others, because uh, they're, they're pretty loud, actually. They like to ramp up the volume on those, even if your volume settings are down to the minimum, which is a bit annoying. Another annoying thing that I find is that you cannot use the D-pad to move at all. The only thing you can do with the D-pad actually is sit down by pushing down on the D-pad. I find that to be a bit of a waste of a D-pad actually because uh, I just feel it would be more convenient to use the D-pad. Unfortunately, we don't have that option. But uh, as you saw, we kind of blacked out and some guy rescued us. That guy is known as the Drifter as well, because, well, we are a Drifter, and he's a Drifter too. That's kind of neat. And he brought us back to his house, I guess, or whoever's house this is. And we find a little... Mm, voicemail thingamajigger, I guess? I'm not qu quite sure what it's supposed to be, but it gives us a very vague hint that uh, we should probably look out for these things which give uh, triangles 
well you can call them whatever you want but I prefer to call them uh, keys of course they're not exactly called keys by the most the, the majority of the players they normally call them modules I guess it works too because there are actual keys to look out for Ah yes, this is important. That's end game. Funny how end game is right here. Now I'll, I'll lower the volume a little bit because it's kind of loud. It's getting a bit annoying. But yeah, this is the town and this is the end game. We'll get to it later. And in the town, you can go to various shops, which will allow you to buy upgrades. We won't be able to buy upgrades right now though, because uh, we are missing some vital components to buy upgrades with. And these are doors which you need to get some keys for. We'll try to get as many keys as we can. Here's a guy who for some reason turns into a bird. And then turns back to normal. Who tells you his story about how he arrived here but then was beaten up by a bunch of punks and now he's sitting here as a hobo wonder what happened, why did they pick a fight on him? who knows what about this guy, what's he got to say? Well, it seems like he and some other guy were out exploring but then there were monsters but then the drifter showed up and saved them But he didn't seem to give much of a shit about the thank yous and rewards or anything. He just walked away. Bit of an asshole, isn't he? I don't know. Maybe he's just uh, playing into the edge stereotype or whatever. Maybe he's just too cool for you. Who knows? And honestly, who cares? He helped them out. He helped us out. That's all we need to know. Now if you look here, you'll notice that we need uh, a few things to get this thing working again. We'll need four of modules from each end of the world and four of something else. Mm, what could this be? We'll find out soon enough. This actually isn't a very long game, so I think we'll be able to beat it in a couple of hours at this rate. Let's go to the north side first, because uh, I don't know, I like going to the north side first. That over there looks like a health kit. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to refer to health kits as uh, Estus charges and just heal the healing items as Estus. Mostly because I f of that comparison I made about the difficulty being kind of like Souls games. I don't know, it just feels uh, similar to me. Sometimes you get attacked by these black spider things, but don't worry about them, they're pretty weak. What I picked up earlier was uh, a gear bit, apparently, that's how it's called. I used to call it an upgrade point, but whatever. Gear bits uh, give you a gear once you collect four of them, and they are used for upgrades. So naturally, we're gonna be seeking them out too. Because the more we can get, the more we can get upgrades. If, if that makes sense. <laughs> the more we can get upgrades. The more upgrades we can get, I mean. And more upgrades equals more bueno. This game is all about the secrets. So if you're not looking out for them, you're missing out. In fact, you can beat the game without unlocking much of anything, really. Why would you do that? Then you know that you can uh, unlock some secrets. Wouldn't you want to unlock them? I know I would. So we'll do just that. This looks suspicious, doesn't it? Well, sometimes you can find places where you can interact with nothing at all. And uh, it'll show you invisible tiles. For now I managed to unlock a monolith. I'm still not quite sure what it does. I suppose it gives you a bit of backstory or something to look at once you got all of them. There's four in each region. So far I found one of them. 
Who's this? Ah. This guy here lets us know about a boss that resides in this area. And he marks out his location. Coincidentally, the locations of the bosses on the map are also the locations of uh, things that you need to be looking out for in order to unlock the end game uh, place. Let's call it the dungeon for the sake of convenience. Now there's something here. There you go. Another gear bit. If you run past here, you're not gonna notice that there's something uh, on the left here. It's a secret to everybody. It's another gear bit. At this rate, we already have three. Another one will yield us a gear, which will allow us to get uh, no upgrades at all. The cheapest upgrade is actually two gears. However, I want to save up for a particularly useful upgrade, which is also kind of annoying to make use of. And here's the first of our enemies, of this region at least, the birds, bird people in particular. Bird people are kind of annoying, because they fly, they swoop, but the good thing about them is that they die very easily. They only got 1 HP, so just slash away. And the music is starting to pick up. That's a door over there, it needs quite a few keys, we're not getting to it yet. And down there, we're not gonna go there yet. Cause that's a dungeon that can only be accessed after the boss is defeated. First, let's do what I did and get ourselves that gear. Bam. Doesn't really look like a gear, it looks more like a railroad track, but whatever. Either one works. Jump off, please. You can jump off at pretty much any point when you're on a ledge, so that's not a problem. And look at that. That's one of the giants we saw in the previous cutscene. I'm assuming that they showed up at some point and they made quite a ruckus around here. But they got eventually defeated. Which is why things are not as chaotic as they would be if the giants were still alive. I'm not entirely sure what caused the giants to show up in the first place though. It feels like uh, they just showed up. Like somebody maybe evoked them or maybe they just showed up like somebody built them. It's hard to tell. But one thing is certain, they were here to cause some major league damage. It seems like they did that. As we'll, f as we'll be finding out soon enough. We weren't just here to destroy things. We also made some people very... Crazy. Insane in the membrane, if you will. And some creatures were never left the same to begin with, like these bloody dogs. You'll notice that they have crystals growing all over them. You wouldn't expect uh, dogs to actually have that, but, well, they do. If you go over here, we'll find some other things that might be useful. A good thing to keep in mind is if you have uh, all of the med kits that you can carry, picking up a new one will heal you. So it's kind of useful. When you don't want to use your own med kit, but you know there's one around and you're hurt. Here you'll find another gear bit. Pick it up. And there's also another monolith. I'm checking for any more secrets. No, there ain't. I'm quite interested to find out what the monoliths do. I'm, I'm probably on the right track when I say that they're just there for the storytelling purposes. But I still haven't figured that yet. It just looks like the Ten Commandments are being laid out across the world and you gotta find them all or else Jesus will be pissed. Speaking of which, here's a big buff bird. Let's talk with him. From this picture we can guess that he was maybe living in some kind of a monastery that took care of the little hatchlings. But somebody showed up with some interesting staffs. And they raised the place to the ground. The bird guy here tried to rescue as many as he could. 
Unfortunately, his place got burned down. No idea what happened with the hatchlings, though. Could have been kidnapped or something. Now he lives here in so in solitude. That's all he's gonna say. And I think that's actually a pretty good thing. I, I really like the storytelling in this game. No dialogue, but uh, the pictures do say quite a bit. Pictures and cutscenes. However, the one thing that doesn't make any sense is that damn dog. He just keeps showing up and walking away. And it's like, what? Uh, what's that all about? I don't know. This, however, is pretty obvious. The other drifter is here. And he just did some damage. Talk with him when you meet up with him. And he'll point out uh, module locations. Four of them, in fact. He will also tell you that uh, modules look pretty neat and shiny, but they usually tend to have some uh, monsters around them, I guess, to keep them covered. Or something of the sort, who the fuck knows. 